on this screen. Okay, good for reminding me. Okay, so the uh, uh, the three types of thinking, or I will call them. Uh, I use the word types, but uh, very soon we will find the word type is not the appropriate one, but that's for uh, for the beginning, and then I will uh, give it a different uh, name. So the uh, types of thinking, I did not, I could have said methods of thinking, the reason I hesitated to do that is because of this, because I had the word logic, which is very common, especially among philosophers. And this is the most, in fact, uh, common technique that the people uh, use or they think of it as a method. Uh, and then I have the scientific, and then I have the rational. Now, when I said I hesitated to use methods of thinking because in reality, a logic is not, does not qualify to be a method. It's rather a style than a method. But nevertheless, I will keep these types of thinking in, in parentheses. I am talking about the methods. What methodology you use to provide a thought uh, on a, a certain issue. So that's the, here, what I'm to talking about here. What methodology? And when I use the word methodology, I'm more comfortable than method. Uh, because methodology, sometimes it tells you what's the process or procedure that you are using. So what methodology someone can use to provide or generate a thought. What's the process? So this, what is the process? What do you do? Okay. Uh, how do you conduct the uh, thinking process? So it's about the process. It's like a flow chart. How do I go with my flow chart for thinking? Within this question, there are three ways, three different ways which are uh, known, which are commonly used uh, by people. And I'm talking about now the uh, thinking or the mental thinking, thinking of the mind. And that's what we talked about earlier. There is a mind that's thinking. I'm not talking about any response, just a response for the sake of response, whether correct or incorrect. I'm talking about uh, uh, I have an issue and I need to provide a thought. Let me start with examples. That's uh, so I. Uh, so let me start with the logic. Logic as. And let me change my words. I'll keep ch changing as a means of thinking. So I'll take this out. Okay, now the logic, uh, before I give the definition on how the uh, philosophers define logic, uh, I will just uh, provide an example. Let's say, I will say, uh, let me use some uh, uh, from the political uh, analysis issue, uh, or maybe even, uh, uh, either with HTHAD or political analysis, either way will be okay. But let's see on the political analysis. I will say uh, from uh, uh, I had my example going back to 1990, okay, in 1990. Uh, the president of Iraq at the time, Saddam, 
invaded Kuwait. Okay, now that's one statement. Another statement before invading Kuwait, Saddam met with the ambassador. of the United States of America. Her name was April Glassby, as far as I remember. Okay. Now, I provide this, these two pieces of information. One is that uh, Saddam did invade Kuwait. The other piece of information is uh, uh, Saddam met with the April Glassby uh, before the attack. And uh, I need to think about this issue, what's going on, okay? I, I come to the conclusion, this is logic now, by logic. Look, with logic, I'm not going to analyze or extract other information and to see what really they talked about during this meeting, because this information may or may not be available to me. I will just say, oh, uh, because uh, Saddam met with Glassby, and because he did invade uh, Kuwait, then my conclusion, logical, logical conclusion, Saddam acted on the in the interest of the USA, which means he met with the uh, ambassador, the ambassador, and because he invaded Kuwait, therefore, therefore he must have <clears throat> acted based on the recommendation, acted in the interest or or based on the recommendations of the US. Okay, so this is conclusion number one. Now this conclusion note, uh, What does it lack? Lacks the following. The essence of the meeting. Okay. What was the reason for the meeting? Any information coming out or leak from that meeting. Also, the declared or undeclared reasons for the attack, and also the political Uh, alliances that Iraq and Kuwait had before the attack, and also all of this is a relevant information to the issue which I did not use uh, here. I just use the logical conclusion based on two, uh, two premises, if you will, not necessarily facts, then I make a conclusion out of uh, premise. Okay, so this is, all of these are lacking. I did not use, I did not even have to use them because it's, uh, I simply can make a conclusion from so the, here will be, let me know, this logic is used 
two or more premises to generate a new conclusion or result. I have premises and in this case, my premise is that uh, there is an attack, which is true, this is fact. And there is another premise that uh, Saddam met with uh, April Glassby to discuss the issue of the war. Uh, that's the other premise. And based on that, I find a conclusion. Now with this, you, if you go along with this, with this conclusion, you come up now from this logic, the logical conclusion, so first logical conclusion is that Saddam responded to the US uh, desire, let's call it, to attack Kuwait, or to be to attack now, of course, uh, where there is nothing here that says why. Now, there is a second conclusion. Now, this is interesting. That's the, 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 the avalanche. This is the series. Second conclusion uses the new conclusion. Uh, not the new, the first conclusion as a premise and another premise. Premise means assumption. For example, here, the new, the conclusion is that Saddam responded to the, uh, to the call of the US. And also another premise, Saddam was uh, an ally to Britain, was, so conclusion now, Saddam switched roles, switched his role from being British ally to becoming US ally. See? So with one issue, now if I continue with this, now I will, my new, my new premise becomes Saddam now is an American agent. So that's a premise. Then there is a, 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 a new scenario, I will start using this as a base to derive thoughts, okay? So this is called logical sequence. Logical sequence. It is thinking, it is thinking, okay? So, uh, I'm not just making things up. I do have issue at hand and I, I do have some information, but the way I provide the thought is I try to derive conclusions from premises or ideas, not from the application of the idea or the information or the thought to the uh, directly to the subject matter. So it is thinking, it could be shallow, and could be deep. Deep means I find I try to find the most suitable uh, uh, arguments, if you will. And in fact, in logic, sometimes they call them arguments instead of premises, so I can derive thought. It could be this, but it defies. Actually, it, it does not apply a well-defined method for generating the thought. Because with the logic, 
the reason I'm saying that is because if I give the two premises to the to two different persons, you will arrive at two different conclusions. Actually, you yourself, using the logic, you may have, you, you can prove or disprove a certain theory uh, yourself using the same, the same ideas. So it's the same, if I will, So let me give another example. Now I remember the example I wanted to say. This very interesting example from all Greek philosophers. These are the inventors of logic, actually. And that's why they used to call them the lazy Greek philosophers, because logic is the uh, just like shallow thinking? It's very lazy. It doesn't require you to uh, to investigate and to go and look for evidences and to tie evidences with the with the objects. Uh, it, it it allows you to make conclusions while while you are sitting at home without even opening a piece of a newspaper. So the all the Greek philosophers they had this conclusion. They said uh, the God. In fact, one, uh, I think they are called the uh, Abukrate uh, philosophers. God did create the universe. And uh, stop this uh, recording. Hello? Okay. So the Greeks, or some of the philosophers, they said, okay, God did create the universe and people. And the other premise or other argument they use that God is absolute and the pure and superior to his creatures. So they said, oh, the, God did create the universe. Of course, the universe is the created being, so it must be lower quality and lower value than God. Okay. Now, note that this argument is not even proven. Who said that? I don't know God. I don't know who he is. I don't know his substance. So how am I, uh, I can't say that, but nevertheless, that's an argument. And they did, God did create the universe and people uh, with lower substance than God. What's the conclusion now? And there are many conclusions, but there are a series of them. So conclusion, God is too pure to run the affairs of uh, impure, 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 yeah. I think I am right. Yeah too pure to run the affairs of impure creature. That's conclusion number one. Conclusion number two, God let the universe and people function on their own. So he did not, does not interfere. God is too pure to interfere with the affairs of the impure. Okay, so this is logic. And this logic, unfortunately, you find it sometimes it found its ways in the Islamic uh, 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 thoughts 
uh, with some groups who started looking at, okay, uh, is God going to, to interact with all the actions of the people? And they came to the conclusion, no, God allows you to, uh, to do your own work, to do your own job, and he's just watching. Uh, he does not interfere. Uh, so this is this was the the premises that they started with. Uh, so they made assumptions about the substance of God, purity and impurity. They made assumptions about the uh, people and the universe, purity or impurity. Then they made uh, with their conclusion is the assumption that also the pure will not interfere with the and. Uh, impure. In fact, you will find the sometimes some uh, sluggish sentences or statements. They would say, uh, "If God would interfere in the affairs of people, which could be dirty." then God's hands become dirty and that defies his purity. That's logic. Now, the interesting thing about this logic is that when you are reading it and uh, you are, you go with the flow uh, it sounds a good flow, natural flow. So it's tempting for me or anyone to say, oh, wow, it, it makes sense. Now, makes sense I, 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 once you start putting the question, who told you that the substance of God is pure? What does purity mean for a God? Does this characteristic of purity or impurity, does it apply or does not apply? And if you don't understand this issue, I will give you uh, examples from our life. Not every uh, object in this world can be ca characterized as pure or impure. Uh, you can characterize things being solid, not solid, big, small, uh, but not necessarily pure or impure. That's mm -hmm. where did you get the issue or the, the, the idea that the God it can be characterized as pure uh, in defiance of impurity. Uh, you would tell me it's because of perfection. Uh, who told you? Where did you get the issue about perfection in this in this uh, in this uh, matter? So this is logic. So logic again. So the, the, I think I. Uh, so let me do it as uh, the logic is. I have here an idea. Or the idea of uh, both argument premise number one. This number two, and here I make a conclusion or new thought, new idea, new thought. So we'll take this, take this one. And that's how we, and of course here, this is my brain. Or I will start using the word mind instead of brain. So I take this idea, I take this one, these two, and then I generate this new one. 
and in in uh, although indirectly these two thoughts or two ideas or two arguments they uh, they are related to some some object to some some being or some reality which is the reality here is what is the role so the question will be in our previous example what is the role of the creator uh, in relation to the created being so this is the question and this question is widely used in the issue of qada wa qadar in islam and many of our scholars they followed the same uh, uh, the same logic here uh, that the Greeks uh, have have used and they used the logic and they arrived at conclusions sometimes the conclusion is correct sometimes it's incorrect it depends how uh, they use the logic and it could be accidentally uh, correct because logic is not always wrong uh, because you may arrive at the correct conclusion without uh, without spending the time on 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 real method of thinking so that's the essence of logic so what that's why uh, we are hesitant to call logic as a method Cannot be considered as a methodology because as I said with the same conclusion the same premises you may arrive at two opposite conclusions it cannot be considered as methodologies it is rather we call it a style that someone uses to arrive at conclusions in uh, <clears throat> in our islamic uh, literature or culture logic has been extensively used uh, in issues some issues related to aqidah and in the derivation of fiqh of rules especially so let me before i leave this issue here logical uses in within Islamic culture. So you will find that in issues related to Aqidah, especially Qada wa Qadar, and the explanation of Qadr and the uh, involvement the uh, uh, the role of God in the life of the humans or the people which has to do with the rizq, which has to do with the, what we call the death and life and the creation of the, uh, the human acts, the uh, transactions made by uh, people. So, and also issues related to uh, fiqh, jurisprudence, especially in the issue of qiyas, analogy. Yes, is almost very tempting. It's very tempting to use the logical thinking in Qiyas. So here you will see, well, uh, Islam permitted X and Islam permitted Y. Now X and Y they resemble Z, so therefore Z is permitted. So this is, uh, I'm just making up 
some very generic uh, examples, but in the uh, uh, in the in the extraction of the fiqh, if you are careful, you will find tens of cases where the thinking is is more of an, more of analogy and uh, logic than rational thinking, which we will uh, which which we uh, will say that rational thinking is the only method which should be used in the thinking process and logic is uh, should be uh, should be avoided altogether uh, except that i say for logic to use logic you must prove the basic premises first to okay you must apply the arguments directly to the subject matter And then you must make sure that the arguments are sufficient to explain or pass a judgment. So in, in other words, you are really moving from logic to uh, next level of thinking. Okay, so this is the logic. Now let me go back to the next one. Unless somebody has somebody has a question, go ahead. Yes, well, I mean the, uh, the example for the fake uh, using logic over there. Would this be the example that sometimes we have heard about the uh, hijab of a woman? That woman used to wear hijab because uh, she was threatened because of security. Now that she is safe and she doesn't feel threatened, that she can take off her hijab. This is one of the arguments that have been. So this would be the argument of the logic. Yes, and also would be a, a logic is the uh, fitna. Uh, the uh, uh, woman's uh, voice is uh, very uh, uh, attractive, and attraction can lead uh, to some uh, uh, fitna of the men, and therefore, women should not speak in public. So that's another, uh, yeah. And you'll find probably tens of these uh, examples uh, in the the way we derive the rules. Uh, also, some some of these issues came in the uh, within the party movement and party structure. Is the uh, the rulers uh, are not ruling by Islam, and if they are not ruling by Islam, they have to be uh, uh, to be evicted. And one way of evicting is to use arms. Therefore, you have to carry arms against the rulers. So that's uh, that's logic. Where you you can take the person back to the dalils and evidences, you will find that this is not true. Or someone else will say, well, the rulers are uh, not ruling by Islam. Uh, they have to be evicted, but because they are not ruling by Islam, uh, you don't have to use uh, arms against them. You have to use convictions. It's it's a logic. Either way, it can be uh, it can be argued. And that's the 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 interesting thing about the logic is that you can argue it either way. Yeah, but that's a good example you gave about the uh, ladies. So, uh... Um, I, I, I have a couple of questions uh, related to your first slide. Okay. If, uh, um, you mentioned that logic could be uh, uh, superficial thinking or deep thinking. Yes. Uh, and we're, we're talking, uh, you mentioned that uh, uh, 
that logic is kind of a lazy way of thinking too, that we're not using too many premises and we're not going deeper into it, but deep thinking can be a quick form of thinking. So if how, I mean, oh, if, if we're saying that- Okay, uh, I'll tell you where uh, it could be shallow, of course, which is very common, it could be deep. Uh, let's go back to my example about Saddam here. Yeah, so here uh, I made two premises. I got uh, conclusion one, then I used the conclusion, second conclusion, uh, took the first two, uh, two arguments, I got a conclusion, then I got the, my new conclusion becomes my argument, a new argument, and then I get a third, uh, a second conclusion. Now my second conclusion becomes also an argument, then I continue. This is deep. That's not superficial because now you are collecting as you go in the logic. That's how the philosophies were built. A whole philosophy. You read uh, philosophy of Plato, of, uh, Aristotle, uh, the uh, uh, recent uh, philosophies like Kent, uh, in fact, Kent, the, the, the German philosopher, uh, he had his whole book structured around one, two basic uh, arguments. One of them was, uh, how do I prove my existence? First, he wanted to, to say, well, to prove the existence, uh, he needed to, to be at one argument uh, to feel, and how could he feel if he gets uh, pinched in his arm or somewhere? Then he will. Uh, then he feels he realizes that I do exist. So he came to the conclusion. One conclusion is, uh, I do exist. I do exist because I feel the pain. And then uh, he brought another example. He said, Well. What if I uh, can uh, do something else that allows me to realize I do exist without feeling the pain? He used the brain. He said, if I think, if I think, then I can, uh, then I do exist because thinking uh, without, think, without thinking, you cannot exist. So if I think I, I do exist. And then farther on, he brought the issue, how do I know that I'm thinking? Then he came with the conclusion that suspicion, suspicion is a means to prove that you are thinking. So that's deep, that's not shallow, but that's wrong, of course. Uh, it's, uh, it's still logic uh, without any, it does not qualify as a, a valid method of thought because the some philosophers who came after him they use the same arguments to <clears throat> uh, the same arguments to to arrive at different conclusions and if you remember at the beginning when we started this class i talked about hegel and marx hegel and marx they use the same premises and the same foundations and they arrived at two different conclusions marx arrived at the conclusion that the world is eternal uh, and there is no idea behind the world and Hegel in his idealism he arrived at the conclusion that there is an idea behind the world uh, and uh, that's where idealism comes in because everything comes from an idea and they use the same foundations the same premises so that, that would be qualified as logical thinking so when when we take it to the n number of uh, premises, one built over the other, over the other, that becomes kind of a deep thinking. Yes, yeah. And if you just stick at uh, two premises and you you are happy with the final conclusion, that uh, that's shallow. Okay, and just real quick, uh, just want to clarify the second slide. Now, when we're talking about the difference between style and method and why style is, not uh, suitable because uh, 
with, with the with this type with this style of thinking logical we can have different conclusions different premises right yes. this is this is why we're saying it's not a method but right. this can be said sorry oh uh, go ahead so this 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 can be said for uh rational and scientific right i mean they can lead to different conclusions uh in in that in that aspect so how, i mean oh. i'm still trying to kind of clarify the yeah. well, this concept up here in in uh, uh, i will show the difference when i talk uh, talk about scientific uh, where different conclusions come from here in logic let me state it clearly in logic we see the same evidence or argument same evidence or argument with same application to some reality could lead to more than one conclusion even by the same person and that's where it uh, uh, the 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 quality of a method the characteristics of a method it's like uh, like an algorithm you follow the algorithm if you have the same input you will always arrive at the same at the same output unless unless you miss part of the input you don't use it okay you don't use uh, let's say if with the with the with the logic so i have three arguments three evidences i start playing with them uh, i could arrive at multiple conclusions uh, why? Because I don't have a specific here, no specific process to follow in order to arrive at the conclusion. In uh, technology, you say no algorithmic. Now the word algorithm does anybody know where does the word algorithm comes from? Is it from Al Khawarizmi? Yes. Khawarizmi. Al Khawarizmi. Khawarizmi. Garifmizi. Comes from Al Khawarizmi. So there is no algorithmic process to follow, uh, like in. Uh, uh, sometimes uh, I give when I teach some of my courses to show the uh, where the logic can can differ. If you don't have a specific algorithm, uh, let me show the. Okay, some interesting. Example, uh, let's say if you want to do simple arithmetic expressions, say eight plus five times two. Now, one answer would be eight plus five is uh, 13 times two is 26, or it can be eight plus 10, which is 8 plus 10, which is 18. So you could have two answers with the same information because there is no procedure. But if the algorithmic, this is no algorithm. There is no algorithm, no process, no algorithm, method, or process. If you have the algorithm or process, when you say, make sure to perform multiplication before addition. For example, there could be some other rules, but this is one rule. In this case, you will come and say eight plus five 
times two leads to first multiply five times two equals ten two add ten plus eight. So if you repeat this million times by million people, you will always arrive at the conclusion of 18. But this one, every time you do that, you make them to 26 or 18. That's what we call uh, no algorithmic, no process. With the logic, with the logic, uh, you, you have premises, but there is no method, specific method to say, how am I going to use these premises and apply them to my to my subject in order to arrive at the conclusion. This is perfectly uh, uh, or completely left to you, to your brain to function the way it wants. There is no algorithm here. And that's a typical so, example. So, yeah, go ahead. So, I mean, no, if, I, if I wanna just distinguish in a little bit more clarity, I mean, when we talk about the HTL, because the HTL could have the evidence and the application and different conclusions, uh, for uh, I mean, for instance, an example also being when when Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi asked the Sahaba not to pray till uh, pray uh, till you get to that town, and some concluded that not to pray till you actually get there, and some concluded no, he meant to hurry over there. So over here, there there is a premise, uh, but the conclusion is still a little bit different. So mm. to, how how would how would that factor in over here? Oh, we're saying be because it has a premise and logical, logical doesn't have any kind of premise. So uh, in other kind of method of thinking, it has a premise, so it can still lead to different conclusions, but there is a premise. So the main distinction is having a premise. Uh, the main conclusion is applying the premise to the, to the subject and uh, finding uh, all uh, relevant conclusions and possibilities and select one of these possibilities based on your, on your understanding. So the question there, in fact, that's how the, the uh, scholars of Usul, they took this example as the uh, permission, permission of uh, Ijtihad and uh, differences. So when they wanted to see, is it allowed to make an ijtihad with a text, although there is a text, to arrive at two different conclusions, they use this example. So this example is used uh, to, to, uh, to justify the ijtihad and differences in conclusions. Whereas the issue itself now, uh, the issue itself, for example, when we say, don't pray Asr until you reach, uh, I think, Bani Quraiba. Okay? So now, uh, some people, when they were approaching BQ, Bani Qurayza, and Maghrib was coming there. So now they looked at two arguments. They checked two arguments. One argument, first, not to pray Asr. And second, that Asr is a wajib. Three, uh, Maghrib will come before arriving at Bani Quraytha. So the conclusion Let's pray. 
So the conclusion is valid here. The conclusion is valid. Why it's valid? Because the source of the order did not specify uh, what to do in the case of late arrival. So that's why the conclusion here is this is not logic. This is not logic. They applied the information. The information don't pray until you get to uh, uh, to Bani Quraidah. Now we are not arriving at Bani Quraidah before before Maghrib. So the Asr time will pass. Then they come to the conclusion, uh, and there is an element of logic here. That's where they okay. Then the Prophet must have wanted us to speed up. He wanted us to speed up so that we arrive at Bani Quraidah before Asr, before Maghrib. So we will, and then we will pray Asr time uh, there. So this is the first conclusion. Uh, what they have not done here, what they, they could have done is to go and ask the Prophet himself. When it, it became too late, they would say, okay, shall we pray now or not? They didn't do that. Evidently, now this is uh, some of the later fuqaha, they would say, well, maybe the Prophet وسلم, was not close enough to, uh, for them to ask. Because if he was close enough, the Sahaba would have asked the question. They would not have gone there. So there is an element of logic here, even in that act. Now, the other ones, here the other group, they said, Prophet made order. It's not allowed to disobey or do something else. And if we miss Asr, then this is with the approval of the Prophet. Okay, so and the uh, the questions here which I would uh, raise in order to understand which one is correct. Question is, was the prophet available to ask? Did any Sahaba ask the prophet what to do? and I don't have information about that, then I will say, then what happened afterwards? Afterwards, oh, I know the prophet approved both. Ah, now I come to the conclusion that each group of the Sahaba who made that conclusion, they already know that the Prophet sometimes, if he leaves something unspecified, it is for them, for the Sahaba to make their conclusions on the uh, uh, on the issue. Okay, so this, so that's that becomes the conclusion which we make from here. But this is a very interesting example of uh, the how the Sahaba used to think because uh, and that's how we understood their own thinking process so the thinking process is that uh, look they will make their conclusion they don't have to ask and they and as long as the understanding is valid 
it's a valid understanding, then it's okay. But this thing no. sounds like logic, but it's not really logic. This is because they are applying the information directly to the subject matter here. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, and this this what I mean, just to, I'm, I'm kind of getting it, but just to clarify, because we, we were talking about that logic is that same evidence or the argument application to the same reality could lead to more than one uh, uh, yes. uh, answer. And so, and uh, like in, in the example above, we said that if there's no al algorithm, that it will give different answers. But if we have a rule, then it will always give or uh, one answer. So if, uh, to me, what I'm at least on the surface, the same example in Ishtadar up here, it seems like it's giving different answers. So, just how how are we differentiating then? I mean, because we're getting a different answer. With the, I mean, at least from one saying the definition that we've given, that it's giving different answers in Ishtad also, and this. No, no, the the uh, that it allows us. No, it's not two different answers. See, let's pay attention to this. It says. Uh, where do I uh, said the word no algorithm or is it at the here? bottom the last line yeah no no the, the slide issue above. yeah so the issue is no specific process to follow there is no process to follow to arrive at the conclusion uh, and that's why it's all this is almost certain we will arrive at two different conclusions but in uh, in fact, when I made this, it was in response to the question about even scientific thinking or others. I said, well, yeah, in scientific and rational thinking, uh, I can arrive at two different conclusions, but not for the lack of a process. But the, the process itself allows multiple, uh, multiple uh, conclusions or multiple solutions. So with the, uh, here, with this example, we arrive at, Two different solutions uh, because there is no process here there is no algorithm not because the nature of the problem allows two different solutions here with the issue of the sahaba the nature of the problem allows two different solutions it's not because uh, but the algorithm is there the algorithm is i hear the prophet the prophet made an order i have to abide by the order now with the, with the order of the Prophet, there is yet another order previously on the necessity of praying on time. So therefore, I uh, when I use this, the conclusion is I will pray Asr in Bani Quraida only if I arrive before Maghrib. So that, uh, where the other ones, they use the same process and they arrive at the conclusion that no, we have to pray to, to wait until we get to Bani Quraida, because even for the whole issue of speed up, still we have to make it to, to make the time to reach Bani Quraida as soon as possible. So if the process, there is a process, there is an algorithm here, and the algorithm is to see the order of the prophet and the subject matter, and if there are two issues to achieve here one of them is the immediate order or to combine both orders together then uh, uh, we will arrive at different conclusions uh, now the reason i also said this is deep because now we got the uh, uh, we tried to use as many evidences as possible the one who used more evidence will arrive at a better conclusion. I remember also there is another example, uh, which is almost close to this one, where the uh, uh, one during one of the trips or battles of the Sahaba, one of them he had to make a ghusl, and it was too cold looks like they went up to certain mountain or in the desert at night, it becomes very cold. And he was wounded. And when he was wounded, he wanted to make tayammum instead of making whistle with, uh, with cold water. Uh, some Sahaba told him, there is no excuse for you to use tayammum because we looked at all the tayammum issues 
they have to do with the with the with the uh, with the absence or lack of water. Here we do have water, but it doesn't have it doesn't say if the water is too cold or the water is risky for your moon, then you don't make ghusl. So you better make the ghusl with the uh, so that's a conclusion they arrived at, but they followed the process. There is a process. The process is they looked at the tayammum. What does tayammum mean? It means don't use water for your uh, wudu or uh, ghusl. Uh, and they looked at the reasons uh, when to, to actually have the ruhsa or the excuse. They could not find the excuse uh, that they, they are uh, considering here. And when they went back to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he did, did not like that. And they said, actually, you participated in his, uh, in his death. This person, he died out of the wound. You could have told him to, uh, to, to, to make tayammum because his wound can be impacted by the water. Now, they didn't know this piece of evidence or it, whether it applies or not. So the issue here, again, two different conclusions for the same incident. No? Oh, just one second now. In Somebody has uh, insisted on calling, so it must be an emergency, and it was. Okay. Okay, so this is the, the issue, uh, brother, for, with the question. The following the process does not necessarily uh, reach the same conclusion, as we will see even in scientific thinking, you will not always reach the same conclusion, even though there is an algorithm. Uh, because the conclusion does not depend on the method only. It depends on the evidences used and how you apply the evidences to the object and how you can make the correlations. And this is a power of the brain. Uh, so that's... Uh, so the... But the lack of process, the lack of process will always allow you to have multiple conclusions because every time you can use different process. Uh, it's, it's clear now. Okay. Okay, now let me uh, just introduce the scientific thinking and I will, will talk about it tomorrow, inshallah. Uh, for the scientific thinking, this is, uh, it's a rather, uh, again, it's, this is a method of thinking. There is an algorithm for that. This is the, does have a well-defined process. Okay, and this process uh, is the uh, use the analysis of the subject and subject. Well, I will call the subject. Of the matter. Oh, Muhammad.
السلام علیکم یو ار میوٹڈ اوکے جزاک اللہ خیر اوکے سو فور ایگزامپل سائنٹیفک تھنکنگ ات ڈز ہیو ا ویل ڈیفائن دی پروسس ات میکس انالیسز اف دی میٹر سبجیکٹ دی میٹر ٹو ون اور مور کنڈیشنز آئی ول ٹاک اباؤٹ دیٹ مور ایکسپلیسٹلی نیکسٹ ٹائم اینڈ دین یوز uh information related to the uh, matter with and without the conditions you make comparisons and then derive conclusions that's in a nutshell but then and next time we'll do that more uh, more details uh, and it's a method because it does have a process here so it does have a certain process you apply it uh, again uh, i would say could be different conclusions why would discuss that more elaborately next time inshallah okay uh, i want to uh, stop here i don't want to go into the scientific and rational thinking now it's already uh, uh, almost maghrib time but if there are questions or comments you want to bring up uh, before i proceed go on please Any questions? Oh, can you hear me, first of all? Yes, yes. Well, we can I, hear you. Okay, I thought I'm still muted. All right. Okay. Okay. Uh, if there are no questions, I will upload the video. Uh, by the way, I think I made uh, in all the previous videos some questions. I would appreciate it if you uh, attend the videos. Uh, if there are questions, answer them uh, so that uh, once we are done, I can uh, issue the certificate because certificate will not go automatically until and unless we go through the whole, uh, the, all of the uh, videos and answer the questions. Okay. Okay, uh, if no questions, I will uh, stop sharing now. And I will, uh, uh, if somebody would remind me, I'll try to do that now if I don't forget right away. I will upload this file, which is, which I keep updating. I, I will upload it to the, uh, to the site or the, uh, the model site. So it will be there, inshallah. ان شاء الله جزاك الله خير. اوكي السلام عليكم. وعليكم السلام. وعليكم السلام ورحمه الله.